Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. Because of some early access to the next patch notes for Age of Empires 4, we happen to know that some pretty major changes are coming to water units that in some ways have a lot of similarities on the surface to Age of Empires 2. In this video though, I want to give my reasoning for why I think the changes are fundamentally different, enough so that it makes for an interesting discussion of whether Age of Empires 2 should start borrowing back from AoE 4 and implement something similar. As far as I'm concerned, a good idea is a good idea, and regardless of which game you think is better, if something in either one can be improved by Borrowing within the franchise, then I think it's worth considering. The fundamental issue we need to start by acknowledging is that in Age of Empires 2, water maps are kind of unpopular. That's not just my opinion, and it's pretty easy to back up with stats. Here's a distribution of map popularity by total games played for the last few months, and gives us a sense of which maps are most often being favorited and which are being banned. Now instantly, you might notice a problem with this method. Some maps are just in the rotation less often, whereas we know Arabia and Arena are in it every time, so it's not comparing apples to apples. I would probably counter that by saying that maps not showing up in the rotation alone probably suggests they're unpopular, but it is an extra factor and could be exaggerating the differences. Luckily, we can account for that by correcting for how often maps are available in the pool. Basically, by doing this we're not punishing a map for only being in the rotation once in a while, and it better represents what we're really interested in, which is how popular maps are when they're available. Here you can see that while some hybrid maps like Four Lakes and Golden Swamp are reasonably popular, as you move toward full water maps where you're actually separated from your opponents by water, such as Archipelago, Islands, Team Islands, and arguably Bog Islands, there's quickly a notable lack of interest. So if you personally tend to avoid water maps, you're really not alone. Statistically, it's actually been very difficult to say which are the best water civilizations because pure water maps are just not played often enough to have confidence in the results. As bad as this all seems for Age of Empires 2, the problem has actually been just as bad or even worse in AoE 4, with pure water maps so unpopular they aren't even offered in ranked play at the moment. At least in AoE 2, the hybrid maps with a few lakes etc are sometimes picked more often than unpopular full land maps, but that's not really something you can say about AoE 4. During patch 10257, for example, Quick Match gave the option of 8 pure land maps, 7 hybrid with rivers or lakes, and 2 of what we would call water maps. This is the last patch, by the way, that even gave the option of playing full water maps in 1v1 Quick Match. Now, players cannot pick which map they play in Quick Match, so theoretically, all maps should have been played equally, unless players were intentionally dropping to avoid them. Starting by popularity, it's strictly land maps at the top being the most popular, then all the hybrid maps, which were strictly more popular than full water maps, with a pretty obvious pattern of the more water added to the map, the more players would try to dodge it and re-queue. To be more specific, during the one month the patch was live, using the amount of games played on land maps as a benchmark, we can be confident that somewhere in the ballpark of 60% of the time two players were given a water map during the loading screen, one or both of them alt f forward and refused to play it, so the game didn't start. This is not to beat a dead horse, but just to be clear, this is why water balance is not just being tweaked, but totally overhauled to try to make it not just more fun, but I would even go as far as to say tolerable for the majority of online players. Definitely a lot of this was due to general sieve imbalance on water, as well as some notable bugs, especially when it came to demo ships. But one of the other big problems, in my opinion, was the old AoE 4 system, where archer ships in Age 2 lost to attack ships in Age 3. There were some notable civilization exceptions to that, but there just wasn't a lot of interesting interplay between ship types. Most civs would start by just spamming the one type of ship in H2, and then switch to the better type of ship in H3, which countered the previous type. Contrast that with the current AoE 2 system, with what I'd say is a very loose rock-paper-scissors relationship during Feudal Age. In small numbers, fire galleys beat galleys thanks to high damage output and a bit of extra armor. Fire galleys are then, at least in theory, countered by demolition rafts as they exploit the fire galley short range, though generally you don't see full demo ship navies like that, and it's more often about getting a good hit every now and then. In turn, demo rafts are theoretically countered by galleys, which can destroy them before they can get close enough, although again, this is all in theory. With larger numbers, that breaks down quite often, and it isn't quite a perfect rock, paper, scissors. Demo ships are usually only used sparingly to soften up ships that come too close to your docks, for example, and galleys can start beating the fire ship line when you reach a critical mass with a bit of micro. In AoE 2 though, you at least have a choice in Feudal Age between galleys and fire ships, though obviously it isn't interesting enough to make full-on water maps super popular. That's the context though, so now let's take a look at AoE 4 and the new system it's bringing to the table that might even be worth AoE 2 taking a peek at to see if it's worth considering bringing over. 
I say this as if AOE4 doesn't have Forgotten Empires contributing to it, which they do, and for all I know may already intend to do the same thing in both games. Now from the public update preview, we know AOE4 is overhauling Water next patch to make an explicit rock-paper-scissors relationship with an added twist. Instead of one main ship type in Feudal, you'll now get three core ship types. The Archer type, which beats the Incendiary ship as it can destroy them before they get close, which beats Springled ships, which then complete the cycle by beating Archer ships. That counter relationship is forced with hard-coded bonuses, much more extreme than AoE2. Springled ships do plus 40 to Archer ships and have some extra armor to make them more resilient. Incendiary ships do an extra 300 damage to Springled ships, which cost twice as much and basically cancel out one-on-one, -on -one, while the Archer ships themselves deal plus 18 to Incendiary ships, in addition to just having lots of arrows, making them naturally a bit better at picking them off. The point is, the triangle is enforced with bonuses making these hard counters in a way AoE2 does not have to the same extent. That on its own is something AoE2 could consider, especially with fire ships against galleys. But where I think it gets really intriguing is their cost is now going to add a second dimension. Unlike in AoE2 where the main three ships are basically the same cost and comparable in creation time with just slightly different ratios of wood to gold, AoE4 is going in a totally new direction and ships are now different in even the types of resources needed to build them. Archer ships cost food and wood, Springled ships cost food, wood, and gold, and Incendiary ships cost just wood and gold, all with very different creation times as well. To switch between which ship you're making, you actually need to adjust your economy, especially your food and gold distribution. That's why despite surface similarities in Feudal Age Water now with three different units instead of the previous one, I would say this is actually quite different than AoE2 as you dive deeper. Not only are they really forcing the rock, paper, scissors that we sometimes say is an AoE2, but ultimately doesn't always work out that way in practice, they're also setting it up so you need to redistribute villagers between all of food, wood, and gold to accommodate switching between ship types. This is starting to feel a lot more like the relationship between land units, where transitioning from archers to knights means not just new techs and buildings, but a massive transition to farms, as knights are very food intensive. Theoretically, naval transitions could start to feel more dynamic, and the ships less interchangeable. So besides just giving a little summary of the water balance in AoE2 at the moment and informing you guys of the upcoming AoE4 changes, I guess the fundamental question for AoE2 players now is whether this is something we think AoE2 should incorporate as well. For a rough idea, the equivalent would be to switch the galley's gold cost with food for example, make the fire ships more effective against the galley line with either more bonus damage, armor, and area of effect, there's lots of ways you could approach it, but that make demo ships even more effective against fire ships, to the point you could go full demo against full fire galley and come out ahead. I don't want to get too bogged down in suggesting specific ways to balance it, but it could be an interesting way to try to shake up water and make it more popular, assuming you even think that should be a goal. Realistically, I expect the potential of the same idea coming over probably comes down to how popular it ends up being in AoE4. And like I said, we know Forgotten Empires is involved with that game directly, so if the new approach does prove popular, it may just end up being a matter of time before the idea works its way back. Mostly though, I'm just curious about your guys' thoughts on the idea, either from an AoE4 player's perspective if you're looking forward to the changes, or as an AoE2 player if you think the idea is worth considering shipping over. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.